Hi. Exposing correctly in video is much harder than in photography. In the case of drone video, things are even much harder for several reasons. In this video, I'm going to show you not only how to expose correctly, but also how to plan in advance in order to avoid difficult situations. So, if you want to be a flying filmmaker, stay tuned. The first and most important thing to be careful about in video photography is to avoid clipping or burning the highlights. There are two things that can never be solved in post-production. Out-of-focus images and burned highlight with lots of details in the whites. The method to avoid this is called exposing to the right, which implies the use of the histogram, the best tool for exposing correctly. The histogram shows black to the left, then shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and white. Exposing to the right means avoiding any bar touching the right edge. Notice how the highlight clips and lose all details when some bars touch the right edge. On the other hand, if the bars bunch up to the left edge and there is too much empty space to the right, the image is underexposed, and it is better to increase exposure. When most of the bars are bunched towards the middle of the histogram, we are dealing with a low contrast image. We will probably need to increase contrast while post-processing. If the bars extend in both directions, touching the right and left edges of the histogram, we are in a high dynamic range situation. It is extremely hard to get decent results in drone footage under high dynamic range. So it is better to plan in advance in order to avoid this kind of situation. The zebra highlight warning is also quite useful as it shows very quickly if there are overexposed areas in the image. Exposing still images with a good DSLR is much easier, especially when using raw files and even better with a full frame camera as there is plenty of room for recovering shadows, as the file contains a lot of information. So, all you have to worry is to avoid clipping the white, and a good deal of underexposing is tolerated. Look at how much detail I can extract in the shadows using raw files in my Nikon D850, the king of dynamic range. With video, things are very different because of compression. A video camera has to record at least 24 images per second, so working with RAW files is not possible, unless in very bulky and expensive models. Cannot go into detail here about the video bitrate of all different DJI models of drones, but they mostly are at about 50 to 60 Mbps, while the Phantom 4 Pro, the Mavic 2 and the Mavic Air are 100 Mbps. I have done extensive comparison between a Phantom 4 60 Mbps and the Phantom 4 Pro, which is 100. And the increase in image quality in the Phantom 4 Pro due to minor compression is stunning. I have made a video comparison between the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom 4. I will put a link at the end of this video. Another factor that makes exposing with a drone much harder is the small size of the sensor and of the lenses. For all these reasons, we cannot expect a big latitude for correction of exposure and white balance when shooting videos with drones. So, exposing correctly in camera is extremely important. Things get even harder considering the range of movement allowed by drone filming. Images containing the sky are much brighter than other aiming straight down towards the ground. And in drone filmings we often combine the two, thus seriously increasing the dynamic range. But let's see what tools we have available for adjusting exposure. A high ISO increases the amount of light available, but this comes with a high price in terms of noise. Noise is a huge problem with drone footage. It creeps up at every occasion, but especially when using higher ISO, 
when trying to recover shadows in underexposed situations, when trying to increase contrast. For professional results, it's extremely important to use a good denoiser, and in another video I will analyze a very good one. But denoising is time consuming and doesn't always produce perfect results. So I prefer to keep ISO to its base value, which is 100 in some DJI models and 200 in others. Then we have aperture, but sadly in most DJI models it is fixed. The only DJI models with variable aperture are the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro. The ability to control aperture opens a huge amount of flexibility and helps enormously to get correct exposure. But sadly, with most DJI drones, we have to live without it. Finally, we have shutter speed. But in video, we are seriously limited. First of all, because for obvious reason, we cannot use a shutter speed lower than the frame rate we are using. Generally, 24 or 30 frames per second. In order to get the same amount of motion blur that we see in real life, it is considered best to use a value of shutter speed, double the frame rate. So, 1 50th of a second for a, for a frame rate of 24 frames per second. This is especially true for footage with moving objects and relatively close to the camera. or else when we are flying close to the ground. Otherwise the movement will be quite jittery. On the other hand, we are flying quite high with a drone, doesn't really matter much. So in many situations, when filming with a drone, we have a bit of latitude on the choice of shutter speed. Let's say we can go from 140 up to 200 of a second, if we are not close to the subject. But as you can see, we have no choice of aperture, apart from the two top models, practically no latitude on ISO, and little room with shutter speed. So how do we adjust for different light conditions? The answer is to use ND filters, and also to plan your shot in advance, and simply avoid certain light conditions. ND filters are basically sunglasses for the camera. They reduce the amount of light entering the sensor. I use a set of four filters, ND4, 8, 16 and 32, that gives me 2 to 5 stops of light reduction. In a perfect world the idea would be to have our setting fixed to ISO 100 and shutter speed to 150 of a second, and then modify the incoming light to optimize these settings. It sounds very hard, but after experimenting a bit, you will get used to the correct filter for each light condition. In order to get the best result, it is much better to plan in advance and avoid certain light situations. The worst possible situation for shooting video or photo is in the middle of a very sunny day, especially in summer. It will be difficult to expose correctly with a drone because of high dynamic range, and anyway, the results will be horrible because of very harsh shadows. It is generally said that photographers sleep around midday and only work from 2 hours before sunset until 2 hours after sunrise. If you absolutely must shoot footage under these conditions, try at least to have the sun behind you. Much better to plan the same shot closer to sunset or sunrise. Especially if shooting against the sun, or if there is snow in the image. When shooting video with a drone, we often alternate images containing the sky, which are generally much brighter, with others tilting the camera down towards the ground, much darker. In these situations, the variable aperture of the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro is extremely useful. When using models with fixed aperture, ideally it would be best to shoot all the footage containing the sky, then come back to the nest 
change the ND filter and shoot the parts without the sky. But it is a bit of a waste of time and batteries. This is what I do. Choose the ND filter for exposing the ground at 150th of a second, as these are the shots where we need perfect motion blur. When tilting the camera up to shoot footage containing the sky, I choose a shutter speed a couple of stops faster. As generally in this situation, the subject is much farther away. A very useful revealing shot is when we start shooting toward the ground and then gradually tilt the camera up, including the sky, to reveal something. In these situations, it is important to expose to the right for the sky, avoiding clipping highlight. Then we try to recover the shadows in post production. Several people like to use in this situation automatic exposure to adapt to the change in luminosity. In many situations it can work, but I still prefer to go manual. Another difficult situation for drone footage are hazy and cloudy days. While with photography using raw files, it is easy to cut through haze. In video it is very hard to restore contrast without losing detail and introducing noise. Under these circumstances, drones with higher bitrate, Phantom 4 Pro, Mavic 2 and Mavic Air, tend to perform decently, while the others tend to fall apart. As with higher compression, too many details are lost. Low light conditions are always much more challenging for video compared to photography and even more for drone video. Also, in most countries and in most situations, Flying a drone at night is not allowed. Personally, after sunset, I shoot only time lapses. And I really like it. Finally, if you're using a Mavic 2 zoom, remember that the aperture is not the same at the two ends of the zoom. It goes from f2.8 at 24mm to f3.8 at 48mm. So don't forget to adjust for correct exposure. Rock and roll! Now that we know how to expose correctly, I am gonna do a couple of videos about post-processing drone footage. So subscribe to my channel for plenty of drone and time-lapse excitement. Bye for now and fly safe.